Moon Knight Season 1 stars Oscar Isaac, Ethan Hawke, and Mae Kalamami. Stephen Grant discovers he's been granted the powers of an Egyptian moon god, but he soon finds out that these newfound powers can be both a blessing and a curse to his troubled life. Now going into Moon Knight, I was pretty excited because they were claiming this show to be this new, dark, kind of different look at the MCU, almost similar to a Daredevil or a Jessica Jones. And I was ready for a new take on the MCU, maybe a little darker, more violent. Plus the great cast had me interested and I was pretty excited for the show. Coming out of it, that first half I was not a fan of. The first half of the season just did not win me over. I was pretty uninterested. The second half though, towards the finale, it was very strong, so I feel pretty conflicted on this season. The show starts off very mysterious. You don't know what's really going on. And that obviously was one way to get the audience interested. I was like, okay, I'm interested to see where they go. I don't really know what's going on here. And mind you, I had no prior knowledge to the Moon Knight character. I genuinely had pretty much no idea who this guy was. All I knew was that he was something like a Batman, maybe the Batman of the Marvel Universe. But I hadn't read any of the comics and I still haven't. So I pretty much had no idea what was going on, the different personalities, I didn't really know what was happening. Then you get two episodes in and the show was still not necessarily doing anything for me. I wanted to be hooked, but it couldn't quite do that yet. I do want to say this, I'm inherently not the biggest fan of Egyptian mythology. I just didn't find that part of the entire show really to be interesting. And that's not a problem with the show necessarily, it's more of it's something that I wasn't interested in, so that might have had something to do with why I didn't necessarily enjoy that first half. And it's a heavy presence in the show, there was a lot of exposition heavy scenes, which makes sense because you have to know what's going on. I just didn't find that side of the show with the Egyptian mythology to be all that interesting, in my opinion. And honestly, I found it to be quite boring as that's pretty much what the first half of the show was, setting up everything that was gonna happen in the latter half of the show. But it just felt like they were dragging everything out. I found myself to be checking my phone pretty often, just pretty much waiting for the episode to be over. It almost felt like a chore to get through because I wanted to see what the show was all about, especially with I knew that the fourth episode had some crazy ending. So I tried to stick with the show, Try I really tried to just get interested, but the first couple episodes couldn't do it. Then you get to the end of episode four, which takes such a crazy turn. If you still haven't seen the show, I won't get into necessarily what happens, but something very specific happens at the end of episode four and you're like, okay, where is this gonna go now? Then it does a little bit of a reveal and you kind of just, wow. I kind of saw it coming. It seemed like a very safe way to take the show. I think I, that happened in the comics. So I wasn't all that surprised of where they were gonna take it, but I was still like, okay, let's see where this goes. Then you get to episode five, which takes a fairly dark turn. It explains a lot and I was very happy to see that but it didn't feel like too much exposition heavy. I found it intriguing to go through Steven and Mark's past and see where all this trauma came from. And you get to find out how this personality disorder came to be. And in the sense, it felt very similar to WandaVision episode eight, which that was a big highlight of the show at WandaVision as a whole. So I was like seeing the parallels between those two episodes. And I enjoyed that because, you know, I enjoyed WandaVision so much. And the MCU exploring a different side and grief and trauma was a different route similar to WandaVision. And I was enjoying them taking a bit of a darker turn. And I wasn't won over by Oscar Isaac all too much by that point. But then episode five, man, he is just terrific and won me over. There are a couple scenes where he just breaks down and you completely just feel for him and it kind of breaks you. Again, it was very similar to WandaVision episode eight, which is not a bad thing. It explored trauma and grief. And I loved how it did that, which is something rather deep than the MCU. It goes above that cookie cutter formula. But going into the finale, I was very worried because I didn't know how they were going to be able to tie everything together because you set up a lot for just one episode and the final episode is under 45 minutes. So I was worried going into the final episode, but the final episode is a strong ending I found it to be. There are a lot of fun action sequences all throughout the show, but in the final episode there are a couple ones that had me actually pretty engaged. The final episode is just this pretty much final battle. And again, not, not getting into spoilers, but something I haven't touched on yet was how Actors, specifically Oscar Isaac, can change between two different personalities like this. There was a mo there was a couple of moments actually in the final episode 
where he just changed personality so quickly and I was like, damn, that was so seamless. And when an actor can do that, that's pretty special. Now, was the finale a little rushed? I know some might feel that way. You can feel that, I, I felt it a little bit. But now that we know that they're doing a season two, it's not necessarily confirmed, but they were talking about this being the season finale of the show so far. So I'm assuming they're gonna do a season two. So I'm interested to see where they take the new season especially with the end credit scene of the final episode. But overall, Moon Knight as a whole, not my favorite. And I would honestly say it's in the bottom half of like the MCU Disney Plus TV shows. It's right near Falcon and the Winter Soldier. For me at least, I know plenty of people are loving this show. I was just not that interested and intrigued for the first half. Again, the bottom half of the show, final two episodes really, was where I finally started to get interested and the show caught my attention. Up until that though, I found it to be pretty much a drag. But I'm not gonna say I'm inherently disappointed with the show because my expectations were so high. I was eager to see what it was all about. My expectations were all the way up here, obviously. So again, not too disappointed with the show. I was wanting a little more out of it necessarily, specifically with just the first half. But overall, it's fine. I'm gonna give Moon Knight season one a C plus. This might be a little bit of a hot take, my take on the first season. Why not align with what you think of the first season, but let me know down below, what did you guys think of the first season? Thank you so much for watching this review, and if you did enjoy it, consider giving it a like as well as subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get notified whenever new videos like this go live. Over the next couple days, it's gonna be pretty madness. So make sure to keep your eye out for the next couple videos that I have planned. My name is Ben, people call me Mater, and I'll see you guys in the next one.